we've forgotten. We have made too little of the material world and forgotten that God has taken it to himself and used it as his speech, his communication to us. How does it come about that so many serious seekers after truth are unable to find faith in the Christian God? Asks one person, and how would you describe true faith? Asks another. True faith, as I was trying to feel my way towards in remarks earlier, true faith is daily courageous trust in who God is and what he's done. I think that would be my bottom line there. True faith, courageous, consistent trust in who God is and what he's done. Trust that the God Jesus speaks of and acts for is the real thing. And whether you fully understand that or have the vocabulary to make sense of it, that's, that's the heart. And why do people find that so difficult? Hmm. People are reluctant, I think, to identify with any one historical community. People like to think that their spiritual lives are, that spiritual lives don't oblige them to sign up to this or that community. That's a bit of a problem sometimes. We're not a generation of joiners these days, and members of political parties and rugby clubs will say the same thing. So there's that. But I do think there's also, and it relates to one or two other questions, there's also that persistent feeling that somehow the church doesn't look as if it were about the fullness of life, full humanity restored. It doesn't look as if it were about joy, of the time. Of course it's about sin and repentance. God knows it is, and we'd be nowhere at all if we didn't recognize that. But remember, there is joy in heaven over sinners who repent. You can't separate in the Gospels the sin and repentance message from the joy message. Quite a lot of the time in history, the church hasn't been too bad on the sin and repentance front, but it's fallen rather short on the joy. So perhaps we might think about whether we look as if we are loving and rejoicing because we've been forgiven. Maybe that's just a little bit of what's in here. Ooh, how are we doing for time, Bishop? One more. One more. One more, dear. Um, there's a couple of interesting ones, but I think I may have answered that one accidentally. <laughs> and I think I may have given a hint about how can the creative part of the human mind be applied to our faith? Because if we're talking about beauty, creativity does come in there. Um, okay, well, I'll take one last one. If you could ask Richard Dawkins one question, what would it be? <laughs> well, having been on the receiving end of quite a lot of questions from Richard Dawkins, it's quite... Uh, Intriguing to think what I what would I say the other way around, but um, a couple of years ago, I, I very deliberately in an Easter sermon in Canterbury quoted extensively from one of Richard Dawkins's non-controversial books. There are some, an amazingly beautiful passage about the the excitement of the complexity, the loveliness, the interaction, you know, the many layered beauty of the universe. And I thought it was a wonderful passage. And I think the sort of question I'd want to ask Richard is something like, does that really suggest nothing to you? Does that really suggest that the last word belongs with you know, left brain analytical description? You're not just describing it, I might say. You're not just describing what the universe is like. You're in love with the universe. Well, where the blazes does that come from?